Hello, thanks for the warm welcome. Um, it's great to be here. It's my first time visiting Berlin as well, so what a brilliant occasion to be here. Um, and thank you. Just one moment. We will try this again. Brilliant, great. So hi, I'm Sarah Haydari. I'm a web developer. I work at the BBC News. It's been about a year and a half that I've been working there. Um, and it's my first web development role. So it's been a pretty fun, pretty fun role to be in. So uh, I've, the project that I've been working on for the duration of the, my time there has been the redesign and rebuild of the news front page. So uh, pretty cool. So and what's been part of this is that there's the whole set of the back end, so it's on React and the server side, but also the front end, so a whole new CSS framework and setting up all from scratch. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a question first off. How many of you have ever visited the BBC News website? Hands up. Cool. So that's pretty much almost everybody. Um, OK, so um, hands up again if you've used it in, like, say, the last week. OK, cool. Fewer, but still a good number. Cool. So just to give a bit of context, it's like you're not alone. There are uh, 56, 76 million weekly visitors to the site. And actually, what surprised me when I first found out is actually about around two thirds of them are from outside of the UK. Um, so that found, found that pretty surprising first time when I was looking at the stats. So another question, how many of you have ever visited one of these world service sites? Hands up. OK, I think one or two. Great. Cool, some multilingual people, maybe? Great, so these, uh, these sites, these are all separate uh, new sites. That are, uh, there are around 29 of them, um, 29 uh, different sites. They have different languages, um, different kind of news agendas and news uh, stories being uh, shared on them. And what's pretty cool about them is that they're actually all have, are based on the same code base as the, like, the English news site is. So for example, Mundo, BBC Mundo is the Spanish language site, and that's got around 16 million uh, monthly visitors to the site. So yeah, so uh, as a whole, um, around almost 60 million mon monthly visitors to all of those sites, so the 29 different language sites, uh, world service sites. And what's pretty cool is that almost all of them, 99% of those users are actually from outside the UK. So interesting challenges there. Um, and what's pretty cool is that we're going to uh, launch a few more sites uh, very soon. And they're in the south of Asia and um, lots through Africa as well. So areas which will have lower connections, um, lower bandwidths, um, perhaps necessary some slower connections and things like that. So really, really interesting challenges in terms of scaling to different regions. Um, and then generally, it's not just BBC News and World Service. There's like other services, so that BBC kind of offers um, sport and iPlayer and things. And then there's this kind of really high target to kind of get to 170 million like users worldwide. So like within um, within about five years or so. So yeah, so huge numbers. Kind of difficult to kind of put them into context. So that's going to be enough of this just. The, the, the big statistics, really. Um, I'm just going like, to distill that down to like, what, what that intro is really about. So lots of users, lots of pages. What we really care about is like, reusing things. So as you can imagine, like, having lots of those sites, it's like, it doesn't make sense to um, rebuild everything for, 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 for all of those things. It will be like a maintenance nightmare, really. So as much of a reusability that we, that we can get in our systems, the better. Um, we want our sites to be localizable, which is um, so to be able to just 
uh, change the, the, the scripts and the languages and things, and to make them lightweight. So especially for uh, some of the uh, different regions that we're going into, like outside of Europe um, and outside the US and things, that, uh, that have slow connections that we can, can ensure that our pages are able to get to them as fast as possible. So, um, so those things, you might be thinking, all right, I'm not actually working on a big site. I'm actually working on a pretty, like, like I don't have like 60 million users. What, what is this like relevant to me? How is this talk actually going to be relevant? Um, well, I think the, like, the last three are actually relevant to like, no matter what kind of site you're, you're, you're well, could be thinking about, kind of. Um, in terms of, well, the lightweight, the lightweight, like who doesn't want a site that loads fast? That's just a brilliant user experience, really. Um, these are the two, I'd say, okay, a bit specialized, but if you're thinking, you know, the next billion users are probably going to be in different regions, like why wouldn't you want to perhaps be able to provide some content, perhaps provide some of your services to like different, um, in different languages. Um, and reusability, like, we want to make our lives easy, right? We don't want to keep, like, building the same things over and over again. And, like, if we can reuse things, it just makes, makes things better. So, yeah, so I think, so although, like, the main case that I'm going to be talking about, the main examples I'm going to be talking about are about the BBC News site. I think a lot, uh, there will be things that you can take away to, like, whatever kind of size of project that you're working on, even if it's, like, a hobby weekend thing as well. Right, so that's a bit of the introduction, and this is kind of how I'm going to talk, talk through the rest of this. Um, so I'm going to like, introduce Grandstand. So BBC Grandstand is the CSM framework that we're using. Um, it was actually built um, by B uh, team B BBC Sport, so a separate team. Um, the main creator, Sean Bent, he, was, he, um, he built that as well, and it was used for like, live pages and things which are kind of like live updates to like sports events. So you can get up to the minute of um, sports events. And then that was like used for news and things like that. So we're like, okay, it's been used really well. Um, we should like think about reusing this for, for our news sites in general. So that's the kind of bit of background. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the, the ins and outs of Grandstand and then how it has helped us to to ensure it to be like our CSS for our site to be like lightweight, localizable, and reusable. And touching on at the end about how would you actually go about building your own? Um, yeah, so how, how do you, uh, where would you get started? Like, can you just like, pick up Grandstand and use it, or would you actually need to start from scratch? So that's the kind of all of the topics we'll talk about soon. So, Grandstand. Yeah, so this is a kind of an intimidating list, I should say. You don't need to know it, all of these things. We'll be kind of going through them a little bit of time. I found it pretty difficult when starting out to understand like lots of these abstract concepts and things. Um, so uh, instead of just kind of going through them one by one and just talking about the theory behind it all, I thought I'd start off with examples because I find it much easier to understand things with examples. Right, so as you said, this is like the front page of BBC News. It's on, um, it's on desktops, I can fit more of it in the screen, really. <laughs> but a lot more people, a lot of people do access on um, mobile. So let's actually look at three different parts of the site, of the page, the layout. And this were the three things up close. So um, the first one is like a live pulse. So actually, on the live side, it does pulse. So it's got CSS animation. Um, the second one is a timestamp, so a little clock icon with like how long, a text saying how long ago the story was last updated, and um, finally like a media icon, like a media uh, play video um, icon with the heading. So okay, you might look at these and think, all right, so these are actually very different, like they're different colors, there's like a different like um, typography, there's different fonts, they're like they're different icons too. Like there's nothing really similar, is there? But actually, if you look kind of a bit closer, you can actually see the under the hood kind of thing. Um, there are uh, similarities here. So for example, uh, you'll see that there is uh, the text. And to the left of that, there is an icon, which is exactly the same height as the text, and the same width as that and a bit, bit of a spacing between them, right? So that's a very similar hand. So there's like different components, because they're, they're, they're not identical, you know, different stylings and things. But 
understood they have a similar base pattern. So we can actually use that. We can actually extract that out into like a bullet pattern. It's called a bullet pattern because like bullet points on things, it just kind of reminds you of like, I don't know, Word documents and bullet points and all that kind of thing. So um, yes, so what, what is this pattern? A block of text, the icon with the same height of it, and space between them. So pretty, pretty simple, but it's been used in multiple places. So actually, this is um, this is the kind of emblematic. So this is actually emblematic of like what this grandstand uh, framework uh, allows us to do. So we separate out the the abstract styles. So what we want is to make sure that. Components, so there's three different components that look pretty different. Um, they, we don't actually repeat that CSS from the structure all of the time. So we pull out the common parts. Right, so that's, that's the whole list of all, everything in Grandstand. Um, and actually, the bullet pattern that we just looked at is an object. It's, 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 that's basically, it falls under object. And actually, there are um, 11 different objects in our pattern, and that's like, Instead of going through all of them, I'll just like refer you to the doc later, <laughs> because uh, because I think the bullet pattern kind of is is just emblematic. So there's one that's a flag, so you can have an image next to text that's a line in the middle, because we know we don't want to all center align things vertically all the time by hand. We'd like to just have something that we could just use and, and reuse. So those are the objects. Um, before we go on to the next uh, subject, I want to just have a look, quick aside that uh, in Grandstand, we want to namespace all the things. So what does that mean? So we want to namespace all of our classes. Because we know we don't want to have a class name that actually conflicts with another class that something, somebody else wrote ages ago. Because do we actually know every single class name in existence that's on our pages? Maybe, maybe you do. That's brilliant. But um, I don't know, working in a big team, maybe I, 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 I say that I don't know exactly every class name that every other member, uh, member team member has, has written. So, so this is actually um, namespacing really helps. So GS, GS dash. So this is the kind of start of what we have, the start of our class names of everything in the framework. So grandstand. And because we're dealing with like the, a bullet uh, pattern, uh, which is an object, um, we actually prefix it with GSO. So when you look at the class in your in your in your in the spectra or something like that, you can you know exactly what it is. It's like a bullet, it's an object pattern. And we actually use BEM, so so there's a GSO bullet and there's GS bullet underscore underscore icon, and there's a there's also a GSO bullet under, underscore text and all of that. So that's how it kind of builds up. So, OK, those are objects. Um, what else does Grandstand have, really? What else can you use? So there's an, a whole other set of classes called utilities. Um, as you might expect, OK, that's because of the U, so it's a GSU. Um, starts off with all of the classes, start with a GS-U. So um, <laughs> what's included? So this includes everything like margins, paddings, floats, displays, all of that. Why do we need to do that? Why can't we just just write, I don't know, a margin write 15 pixels? All of that is really straightforward, right? Well, <coughs> what we want is we want to standardize things. So for example, for margin write, we've got GSU MR. Margin write is short. We want short class names because it's, it's easy. Um, so when you add that GSU MR to that like live, uh, the live pulse section, um, you get that little orange gap, so that's the orange margin that appears, so it's pretty straightforward. It just adds it to there. You don't need to kind of write custom CSS for this particular um, component to do that. You. And likewise, I mean, it doesn't necessarily look, look the best idea to design here, because I just wanted to show the same example, but if you change the GSU MR to a GSU ML, so margin left, then it will put the same uh, margin on the other side. So, so that's how you can kind of look at them. So there's, that's just margin, but they're the, the same kind of setup for paddings, like padding top and bottom and all of that as well, and display, display block, and display uh, none, and all of those as well. So all of the things that you kind of need to, to get, get running, really. So, OK, so those are utilities. 
Now, uh, what is SAS tools? So we, um, Grandstand isn't just um, like compiled CSS, it's actually a SAS that we could kind of compile down. And so, what are the SAS tools? Well, they have all our like color variables and things. So we have like um, Ebon, which is like a uh, dark, very dark gray. And we also have mixins, which I will talk about later and how they are relevant and how they're useful. Particularly related to um, localizing, um, localizing our grids and things. So, so okay, there's SAS tools, and then there are like three other sections, of, um, parts of Grandstand. They actually aren't like technically like part of Grandstand, like BBC Grandstand as they were built up, but um, it's um, you can see they're called like gel typography, gel grid, and gel iconography. So these are this like called the BBC like global experience language, and this is um, decided across the whole organisation. So news, sports, iPlayer, music, all of the different kind of big products of the BBC have decided on like like a shared typography, a shared uh, grid system, all of this, so that there's continuity between the sites, um, and yeah, so there's the, there is continuity throughout the kind of BBC experience, <laughs> so to speak. So that's what gel means, global experience language. So the typography. So we've got a set of um, so the, the UX teams have, have got together and created this whole set of typography. What's pretty cool about it is that um, if you've looked into the different like, design systems and things, um, it, it, the sizes, actually, the pixel sizes and the line heights change at different breakpoints. So to enable you, if you're on mobile, to have a large enough, larger kind of size so it's clear. Whereas if you're on desktop, you probably want it smaller so that, so that it fits. So, so there's a lot, a lot of um, work that's gone behind the scenes um, to, to set this up. Um, there's a gel grid. So um, if, you've, if you use different, different types of frameworks, it's just like a... Uh, percentage base grid, which so you've got you've got one column, fifty percent, two columns, etc. And we've got like set gutters between them to make sure all of our like grids look are uh, like uniquely placed. And gel iconography, so SVG icons that are shared across the board. This is just a one a very small selection. There are all sorts of different ones. So like every sport imaginable has an icon that BBC Sport uses. Um, in news, we're pretty, um, we basically only use some of these, so like videos, audios, images, things like that. So, okay, so that was a bit of a whistle-stop tour of different parts of Grandstand. Actually, so you might notice things just rearranged a bit. I talked to the, through them in like that particular order because I think that made more sense in my head anyway. Um, but actually, what grandstand, well, the structure in grandstand is that you you pull in all the gel, like we we'll call them gel foundations, so the grid topography iconography first, and then you have your like your uh, like product specific things, so the objects and utilities after, and your SAS tools. That's the kind of um, hierarchy of items. And there is a much, much more detailed um, like write-up of why this is kind of like inverted triangle um, CSS, and Harry Roberts has given numerous talks on that. So I do recommend uh, I'll sort of share the um, notes and slides of that so to explain why a particular hierarchy is needed when you're importing it in. OK, so we've talked about all of these separately. Right, okay, there's typography classes and all of these things. But how do you actually build a page with them? How do you build, build components that, that you need that you, to, to make a site look good? You need to first make sure that these classes don't really overlap. Um, because if you have lots of classes that kind of do the same thing but kind of overwrite each other, then you just end up with a little bit of a, a, a muddle and it takes a while to, for all the specificity stuff. Try to avoid conflicts of specificity as much as you can, so just go with um, things that classes that ideally don't overlap. So when we actually implement them, um, you can add these kind of uh, classes in different uh, combinations to build up your components. So what does that actually mean? So for example here, this is um, like example headline, for example. Um, 
the font, so the gel Waterloo. The gel is the prefix for like the typography and things like that, because that's based in gel. So the gel Waterloo is the typography size, and there's the bullet pattern because you have the bullet icon and the text. And there's a margin right between like the live pass, as we like sh showed before. There's like a lot, there's a space there. Okay, great. So you've got this for like say the main heading of your first, your main page. But what if you wanted like a smaller heading further down? Do you need to actually redo this component, but with a smaller typography? Um, actually, you don't. All you really need to do is you replace that one class, the one typography class. You replace the gel um, Waterloo one with the gel picker. And it just scales down perfectly, and it works at all from breakpoints. So you can actually just reuse something with just replacing that one class. OK. So that was a bit about how you build up things. Now we'll be talking a bit more about how you can actually localize a system. Right. So what does localization actually mean? OK, so you might think, OK, if it needs to be localized, I need to write, write stuff in a different language. The content needs to be perhaps a different language. So you might have your navigation saying, like, the home button will say home in a, in the different, different language. And you might have a different script. You might have different typography if you're writing. Um, so uh, for example, the BBC Arabic site has an Arabic script. Um, so that's different. And layouts. So you might think, OK, wait, wait a minute. Why does my whole layout need to change? That makes no sense. I would just rather have one layout and for it to just work for everything. Well, that's almost true. That's, like, you can do that in lots of different circumstances, um, except um, some languages are right to left and not left to right. And you might have hard coded margin left everywhere. So what do you do <laughs> if something like that just changes? Like, like, how can you change this? It's a property. Like, how can, I, how can you handle that? So, so we'll talk through the different, the different kind of issues that there are here and how, with Grandstand, you can solve, you can solve them. OK, so first we'll show you what, it, what, what the result is. So these are like two slices of content. So the top one is in Thai and from the Thai site, and the bottom one is um, in Persian, from BBC Persian. Um, Yes, and then you can, you can, for all the different kind of products that, you, that we have, so the world service sites, you can also create these slices. So you might notice that um, Thai is left to right, so it's got a heading there, and the Persian one is right to left. So they look kind of the same, but, but you know, under the hood, they are slightly different. And let's talk about why. So. So the first point on localization was ty uh, well, second point was typography. Why? OK, so let's look at these two examples. One on the left is in English, and then the one on the right is in Persian. Um, they have the same font size. They have the same line heights. They have the same all of that. However, if you read, um, if you read both languages, you'll notice that um, it's actually much harder to read the, the text on the right because of the style of the typography of the words. You need to kind of focus a lot more, and it's just it's, it's really like bunched together and things like that. So it's not as a as a reader of that side by by just having the typography um, that works well in English and for Latin scripts with the spacing between like letters and and lines um, that doesn't really work when you've got different different scripts. Um, so it wouldn't work for like a for for, for Arabic and things and for other scripts. So we've got different um, Chinese and uh, Japanese and all, all sorts of different scripts that we care about. So what do you do? Um, so you actually adapt them depending on which, uh, what setup you want. If you decide, OK, now um, I'm actually, I want the um, Latin CSS um, file. Um, what can I do to get that right? And if I want the, say, Arabic uh, script CSS, what do I do to get that right? So there are a few different things. So the line heights, the font sizes, and at each breakpoint. So what we do in practice is that all the developers and, and UX designers work closely, um, and usually with editorial staff. So uh, because not everybody in, um, as multilingual as some of, some of the team are, not everyone speaks all 29 of the languages. So it's usually best to get somebody from editorial who actually speaks the language to come down and give their opinion on whether it's clear or not. 
so yes, so that so to get actual feedback on is this clear enough? Can you see it well on your on your phone, mobile phone? Okay. So we localize typography, sir. So about the grid, what does that mean to localize a grid? So you might have noticed the, in, in some of the CSS in Grandstand, definitely in the grid, we've got direction left to right. And we have um, text and line left to make sure the text is all aligned properly to the side of the, side of the page, the side of that block. But what do you do when you've, you want to create, if you want to just swap it so that this, this component works with everything on the right? Well, what we use, and we have used, it's not specific to Grandstand, we've used it um, elsewhere in the previous iterations of the site, but it is also included here in Grandstand, is that it's the split function. So it, it's, it's a function that you, it takes two parameters. If it's like, if the site is left to right, which is in most of our sites are, like the all but four of them, all but, uh, so like 20, 25 of the sites are left to right, so we kind of default to, to that being the main default, left to right system. Um, and if it's not, if it's the right to left, so that's the Arabic, Pashto, um, Urdu, and Persian, um, then we choose the value, the second value, the second argument. So this is a function as, as a whole, so it takes two values in. If right to left is true, then return the right to left value. In all other cases, you return the first one. So, so just like uh, a single like if statement to, to make that work. And that is really useful. So, so yeah, so, so basically that will, that will flip. So all of your values, you can flip them around so they work out of the box. But what happens with properties? What if you've actually got a property with margin, right? How, how do you make that work? Um, so in SAS tool settings, you, um, you, you set right to left as false, initially, for example. And the margin right value, to start off with, for example, is just margin right. And if, if it's actually right to left, so in an Arabic case or, or Persian case or all of these cases, it just flips the value around. So that value becomes the, the opposite string. And that just kind of works, which is cool. Um, so yeah, so it, same with margin, same with padding. You just you interpolate it with, with that syntax. So the hash brackets, dollar signs, and 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 then it just works that way. So those are the two ways. The first one is to how to interpolate the values. The second one is how to interpolate the properties to localize them. Cool. Okay. So let's um, talk about how. Um, it can be localizable and a bit about reusability. And the lightweight, it being lightweight is because, because we're reusing all of these classes. They don't overlap, so you don't need to override a lot of things all of the time. OK. So that's a bit of a door about that. How do you actually get started building your own? And why would you want to build your own? Can't you just use this out of the box? Well, a lot of the stuff you can. Um, some of the colors, say you might not want to style your site, the BBC News Red. Um, you might want to have your own colors. Um, or the object patterns. You, you might realize when looking at, at the, the style of designs that you, that you want to have on your site that you don't really have lots of icons next to text, that you have, you have lots of images next to like big chunks of text, or like just look at something else that you might want to abstract into a, into a different pattern. You just basically look at what, you're, what you want to use a lot and decide um, what patterns are worth pulling out so that they're reusable. Okay, so building your own, build your own grandstand. So to set up, it's really cool, really important, and really useful to set up a standard spacing unit. So no more one pixel additions. <laughs> yes, um, this has been a bit of a point of contention, but everyone's now kind of slightly on board because it becomes more, more unified across, across different pages and different components, which is good. Um, Breakpoints and typography. I think this, will, this would be like a whole other talk in itself, and probably somebody who, with a user experience uh, background would be, would be best to um, best place to talk about it. But really, you'd want to have breakpoints that are suited to your context. So, um, if you've got lots of text that that, that you break break it up, and there's enough uh, there's enough of um, spacing between uh, 
between the lines of text and things like that. So that's like a whole art and science in itself. And your color palette. So yes, you don't want to just be slumped with the BBC News thread as much as everybody I'm sure loves it. You're you, you'll choose your own. Right, and for localization, then you'll have the SAS mix and some variables and typography size and uh, styles and sizes. So the things we talked about, you, you can just use the ones from Grandson and copy them over because they should be just work out of the box for your purposes as well. Um, <clears throat> right, and to kind of sum over how to, how to make sure you keep it lightweight. I think this is uh, really important because um, we, we start off with the system, it's very uh, tempting and easy to, to just keep adding to it because you're like, great, it works, it's awesome. Let's just, oh, I need, I've got this other use case, let me just add that one thing. And oh, there's like two months later, this is another use case, let me add that other one thing. And then it could end up being a really not lightweight system, a pr pretty heavy uh, system. So, so really the, the discussions to have, and I do say discussions, even if it is necessarily you, yourself or with other teammates, is to, uh, do you really need that extra variation? Is there any way that you can use the current building blocks to get close to what you need? Um, and finally, um, and I think most importantly, is communicating with others. So if you're a developer, to, to communicate constantly with the designers, um, and, and with the product and with your users. So in our case, that can be editorial, it can be like, like you, um, you as users. Um, communicating with you, taking on feedback. Um, and even if you are actually working by yourself and it's for your own project, communicating to future you is such an important <laughs> <laughs> and it's such an important thing, and I don't think can be uh, like overestimated enough, because you will write a class, you will add something to add IE 11 support, and you will forget six months down the line if you don't add a comment next to it, and you'll be like, why do I need this? I should remove this to make my CSS lightweight, and you break IE 11 support. So um, yes, yeah, so we definitely like to communicate to our future selves, um, so we add comments and things throughout our code and ensure that that helps uh, onboarding as well. So, so new members of your team and things, or if you want to share your project with other people online, and that they can understand where you're coming from and what decisions you've made and, and why you've made them. So yes, so, so to kind of sum up, so we talked a lot about BBC Grandstand, uh, what are all the different sections and, and why they're needed how it enables um, sites to be like lightweight, um, reusable, and localizable, like all of your other components, um, and how you can get started with building your own. So thank you very much. <laughs>